everyone. Now let's apply what we have learned about our lesson in algebra in answering different statements or word problems. Let's have our first example. We have the sum of a number and negative 25 is 45. So find the number. So let's translate this phrase to an, to an equation. So we have the sum of, that means it's add a number, we can represent it as x and negative 25. So we add a number and negative 25 we will get 45. So again, in solving for the value of x, we can transpose this negative side, uh, negative 25 to other side of the equation. And since this is negative, we will make it positive on the other side. So we have x is equal to 45 plus 25. And we can get the value of x. We have here x is equal to 70. So if you want to check if the answer is correct, we can substitute this x to 70. So we have 70 plus negative 25 that is equal to positive 45. Next, we have the difference between a number and 13 is 75. Find the number. So let's translate this statement to an equation. So we have the difference meaning we need to subtract. So a number we can uh, represent as y then minus 13 that is equal to 75 so to find for the value of y we transpose this negative 13 to the other side since this is minus 13 when we transfer it becomes plus that's the opposite um sign or the opposite operation of subtraction so we have 75 plus 13 we will get the value of y which is 88 so y is equal to 88 if you want to check you can just substitute 88 minus 13 and you will get still 75 next we have the product of 4 and the number is 60 what is the number so when you say product that means we multiply or that's the answer in multiplication we have 4 and a number we can represent it as z okay and the word is that means it's equal so 6 is equal to 60. Now to uh, eliminate this 4 or to isolate the variable here on the left side, we can transfer this 4 to the other side. But since this is multiplication, when you transfer it becomes division. So we have z is equal to 60 divided by 4 because we need to uh, use the inverse operation when we transpose. So 60 divided by 4 is 15. So the value of a number of the number is 15. If you want to check, we have 40, 4 times 15, you will get 60. So you, our answer is correct. Next, we have the quotient of a number and 9 is 27. So when you say quotient, that's the answer in division. So we represent the number. We have, let's say, m. And then we divide it to 9. And that equal to, the word is, is equal to 27. So to isolate this m, we transpose this 9 to the other side. But since this is division, we have m divided by 9. When we transpose, it becomes multiplication. So m is equal to 27 times 9. We'll get the value of m. m is equal to 243. Next, we have 7 less than twice a number is 9. What is the number? So let's translate this first this statement to an equation so when you say less than so we need to switch this two number here so a number or twice a number that that means we can write it as 2y then less than meaning subtract or minus and then 7 and then that is equal to so the word is 9 okay so let's eliminate the numbers one by one by transposing uh, the numbers to the other side of the equation so let's start with the 7. So this is minus 7. When we transpose, it becomes plus 7. So we have 2y is equal to 9. Then plus 7, we will get 2y is equal to 16. Then uh, we need to transpose this 2 since this is multiplication. Um, when we transpose, it's division. So y is equal to 16 divided by 2. We have here y is equal to 8. Let's check if our answer is correct. This, this is 8. So 8 times 2 
is uh, 16 minus 7, we will get 9. So our answer is correct. Next, we have the sum of two consecutive integers is 145. Find both integers. When you say consecutive, that means it is successive numbers. And consecutive numbers differ by 1. So, what are we going to do is to, um, we let x for our first number. That's our first number. And since it differs by 1, we can write it as x plus 1. This is the second number, the second um, consecutive number. Then, let's find both integers. And take note that the sum of these two numbers is 145. So, we add x plus the second number, which is x plus 1 is equal to 145. Then, we combine like terms. So, we have 1 plus 1 or x plus x. It becomes 2x plus 1 is equal to 145. Then, we transpose this 1 to the other side. We have 2x is equal to 145 minus 1. Since this is addition, when we transpose it's minus, it's subtraction. That is 2x is equal to 144 and x is equal to 144 transpose this 2 by dividing to the other side we have x is equal to 72 and this x here this 72 is the first number so the second number which is the next consecutive number we have 72 plus 1 is 73 so the first number is 72 and the second number is 73 and let's check if it is correct if the sum of the numbers is 145. So 72 plus 73 is equal to 514. And our answer is correct, 145. Next, we have find the three consecutive even integers whose sum is 198. Now let's discuss the representation of even and odd numbers in algebra. For even numbers, or even number, we can represent as 2x and 2x plus 1 or 2x minus 1 for odd numbers. Now, why is it 2x? Remember that a number is an even number if it is multiple by 2. On the other hand, a number that is not an even number is an odd number. Now, consecutive even numbers differ by 2. Example, we have 16, 18, 20, and so on. Consecutive odd numbers also differ by 2. Example, we have 11, 13, 15, 17. So this time, we let 2x for our first even number since we are looking for 3 consecutive even numbers. So we have we let x we let 2x for our first even number and our next number is since it's dif it differs by 2 we have 2x plus 2 for our second even number and we also have our third number is 2x plus 4 for our third even number then, what we're going to do is to add these three numbers and the sum is 198. So, according to the given, the sum is 198. So, we have 2x plus 2x plus 2 plus 2x plus 4 is equal to 198. So, let's combine all like terms. We have 2x plus 2x plus 2x. So, to combine that, we have 6x plus 2 plus 4 is 6 is equal to 198 then let's transpose this x 6 until we isolate the value the x so we have 6x is equals to 198 minus 6 we have 6x is equals to 192 then transpose the 
6 another 6 here so since this multiplication when you transpose it becomes division so we have x is equal to 32 so our x is 32 and to get our e first even number we have here 2x so we substitute the value of x we have 32 times 2 therefore it is our first number is 64 and since this is 2x which is 64 we add 2 so this is 66 and 64 plus 4 we have 68 so these are our three consecutive even integers so let's check if the answers are correct so we have by we add these three numbers and make sure that our sum is 198 so we have 8 plus 6 is 14 plus 4 is 18 carry 1 18 plus 1 18. okay so our three consecutive even integers are 64 66 and 60. Now this time, let's answer a real-life problem and let's see how do we solve the problem by representing the unknown values with a variable. We have Bobby is 3 years older than Chris. If the sum of their ages is 45, how old is Chris and Bobby? Now, one of the strategies in solving mathematical problems is using equations. In this strategy, the unknown is represented by the variable, and the solution is obtained by solving for the value of the variable. Now, let's analyze the problem. So, if Bobby is 3 years older than Chris, but we don't know the age of Chris, right? So, we let x be the age of Chris. So x is the age of Chris and when Bobby is 3 years older, we can represent as x plus 3. That's the, This is the age of Bobby. Okay, since x is Chris and Bobby is 3 years older than Chris, therefore the age of Bobby is x plus 3. And the sum of their ages is 45. So we need to add the age of Chris and the age of Bobby. The answer is 45. So we have x plus x plus 3 is equal to 45. Then we combine like terms. We have x plus x is 2x plus 3 is equal to 45. Then transpose the 3. So 45 minus 3. 2x is equal to 42. And transpose the 2 by dividing 42, divide, divide 2, we have x is equal to 21. So this x here, okay, so this x is the age of Chris. So if Chris is 21 years old, how old is Bobby, which is 3 years older than Chris? So we have 21 plus 3, we have here 24 years old let's check if our answer is correct so we have 21 plus 24 it is 45 so the sum of their ages is 45 therefore um we we're correct that the age, age of grace is 21 and the age of bobby is 24. now when solving uh, mathematical problems using the strategy making equations Again, the steps are first, we represent the unknown with a variable. So like this, we have to let x for the age of Chris, x plus 3 for the age of Bobby. Then, uh, next is set up the equation based from the condition of the problem. So how do we set up? It says here that the sum of their ages is 45. That's why our equation now is x plus x plus 3 is equal to 45. So this is our second step. Third step is solve for the value of the variable. Then we are already solving here and we get x is equal to 21. Then we determine the answer which is um, the age of Chris is 21 and the age of Bobby is 24. Next we have Mona bought 125 pairs of slippers to be donated to two barangays. She gave Y slippers to barangay A and gave 60 slippers to barangay B. 
how many sleepers did she give to barangay A? So again, we represent the unknown with a variable. So we let, okay, so that is Y for the number of sleepers that will be given to barangay A. So right here, to barangay A. And for barangay B, Mona gave 60 sleepers. This is for the barangay B. And it says here also that the total number of sleepers that she donated is 125 with these two barangays. So, uh, let's set up an equation based on the condition given. So, we have y plus 60 is equal to 125. Then, let's solve for the value of y is equal to 125 minus 60 and y is equal to 65. And since y is equal to 65, we can now answer the question, how many sleepers did she give to Barangay A? And our answer is, she, she gave 65 sleepers to Barangay B. To Barangay A, I mean. So if you want to check, we add 65 plus 60, we will get 125. Next, we have the class of 6G donated relief goods to the people who are affected by the typhoon. The class of 6H donated twice as much as the class of 6G. Now, if there were 345 bags of relief goods in all, how many bags did each class give? So, we don't know the number of relief goods 6G donated, also the 6H. We just know that. Um, the 6H donated twice as much as the class of 6G. So we let um, X for the number of bags donated by 6G, 6G and we let 2X for the number of bags donated by 6H. Okay, so it's, it's, it's mentioned here that the class of 6H donated twice as much as the class of 6G. So if X is 6G, then twice of it, or double, then that's the 6H donated. Then, we create an equation based on the other given that there were 345 bags in all. So we add X plus 2X is equal to 345. And we add 3X is equal to 345. Then we transpose 345 divided by 3. The answer is 115. So for this x, this is the number of bags 6G donated. So 115 bags of relief goods. While 6H, since it is twice, we can multiply 115 times 2. We have 10 carry 1, 32. And um, the answer is 230 bags of relief goods, 6H donated. So we have 5, 4, 3. We're going to add. It's a total of 340. Then our answer is correct. So that's it. I hope that you learned something from our lesson today.